Tales from the Tabletop, the video series where I bring you anecdotes of adventure from Warhammer to D&D and everything in between. And I take my favorite one and I illustrate it for your listening and viewing pleasure. Let us begin. Today's first story comes from Rylan Drubber, and Rylan writes, Joking a potted plant into existence, a classic D&D story come to life. It was the end of an arc, and my players were having a climactic battle. My wild magic sorcerer cast a beautifully timed fireball, dealing massive damage. There was much to celebrate. The stars aligned on the following d20, and it was my pleasure to roll on the wild magic chart. As I prepped my percentage dice, my players began joking about how funny it would be if he turned into a potted plant. The first die dropped behind the screen. My eyes went wide. It was a four. My players continued to joke how ridiculous it would be as the second die dropped. It's moments like this that your DM lives for. No fudged dice, very long odds, and the following number was a two. Guys, you're not gonna believe this, I said. I lifted the screen to show the dice where they lay and proceeded to narrate a potted plant into existence. Oh no, not again. Our next story comes from Mr. Psycho, which, Mr. Psycho, if you are watching, please let me know. Is your name uh, a reference to the Earthworm Jim supervillain, Psycho, or is this is, is this just fun for you? Uh, loved Psycho, thought he was amazing. Mr. Psycho writes, My party had these rings of banded light that we wore to protect us from a death field. A death field generated by the big bad's magic machines. When we began to fight him, it was a slugfest. One by one, we were whittled down to critical health, while not knowing how hurt the big bad was. After a high perception check, we discovered that the room we were fighting in was the epicenter of the machine that had created the death field. Chains were pulsing with dark and ethereal energy that all arose to a central point in the ceiling. A brilliant idea came to mind. I, the elven rogue fighter, looked to our paladin and told him, This is going to be a really dumb idea, but throw me up there. The paladin turned to me and said, What? Are you mad? You expect me to... The wizard cast reduce on me and shouted to the paladin, just go for it! The paladin heaved me up to the central point of the ceiling, and when I was there, I managed to pass the acrobatics check to secure a holding on the chains. I jammed my hand with the ring of light into the center. The good news, I caused a chain reaction, purging the dark energy from the building and killing the big bad. The bad news, I did not survive and the dark energy shredded my soul. But, the party was able to make it out of the campaign. Not a bad way to end. Our next story comes from Mr. Ecstatic5864. Mr. Ecstatic writes, I think I peaked as a player character during a campaign, and I have yet to surpass it in any other session. Let me explain. Me and my friends had this huge homebrew saga that took six campaigns and seven years to complete. During our third campaign, I was playing a wizard with a penchant for lightning. I also had a few levels in Artificer. This will become more important later on. In-game, I was playing a poor wizard who got kicked out of the local magical academy for political reasons. He decided to embrace a kick-ass-and-chew-bubblegum mentality and became an adventurer. I was essentially an aggressive wizard with little self-preservation instincts, and I would often be held back by our party's fighter or cleric from picking fights. 
An ancient blue dragon and his cult were using a magical ritual to absorb the essences of other dragons in order to ascend and become a new dragon god. The combat was a slugfest, with poor rolls happening to both players and the DM. Both our party and the Blue Dragon were down to our very last hit points, with few spell slots left. Our NPC allies were gutted if not dead, which included bronze, silver, and green dragons. My character's arm was bitten off and swallowed by the Blue Dragon. And this is when having three levels in Artificer came into play. It was originally something I picked up for role-playing. We had fun with it. Part of it was creating some homebrew spells for artificers. One was called Detonate. It turns an attuned magical item of yours into a bomb that deals some amount of d10 damage. The number of damage dice used to depend on the grade of the magical item. The arm that the big bag dragon swallowed just so happened to be the one with my bracelet on it. A legendary artifact that enhanced my spells, boosted my perception, and added additional damage to any magical damage I dealt. I told the DM I cast the detonate spell, and I rolled a natural 20. I asked how many d10s I rolled for damage, but the DM was flabbergasted and had me re-roll my concentration check to even let me use the spell because he could not believe that I rolled a 20. I rolled still successfully. I was allowed to roll 9d10. I rolled a total of 83 points of damage by exploding my legendary artifact from the inside of an ancient blue dragon, killing it. Let me be clear. Detonate was a spell that was made purely for the fun of it. My friends and I never actually thought we would use it. My character would then go on to replace his missing arm with a magical robot arm that shoots lightning. He saved the world and married the female bronze dragon that our party's bard failed to seduce, which was hilarious. Eventually, my character took over the magical academy that initially kicked him out and destroyed anyone who could threaten him politically. I have yet to top that session, but I hope I can know that I could top that session, but hey, hope springs eternal. This next story is the one that I've been illustrating the whole time. It's a lot of fun for me, I hope it's a lot of fun for you, and I hope it was worth the wait, so strap in. This one comes from Bubblegum Snap Pudding. Bubblegum Snap Pudding. Band name. I call it. The group I've been DMing for, for the last several years, had just finished off a couple of long, dark adventures dealing with Mind Flayers, Eldritch Spawn, and more. I thought it would be fun to have a one or two session game that would be a bit light and silly. They're a party of six freshly minted ninth level characters. The group found themselves entering a small hamlet that was locally famous for brewing the best beer in the area. The locals had just finished brewing, packing, and shipping off their winter brew. Party members were sitting down to a pint and dinner when a local woman came up and asked if they happened to be adventurers. You see, there's a problem in the brewery that might require your skills, she explained. The two assistant brewers had gone back into the works after shipping was done and hadn't come back out. The master brewer got angry and went in after them to see what was going on, and he hadn't come out. Worse yet, he has the only key to the back area. The brewery is built into the side of a hill, so there's no other way in 
or out. She was hoping that the party of six strong adventurers could investigate and get everyone out. Oddly, for this group anyway, not a one asked what the reward would be. I guess poking around the back of a brewery would be its own reward. The rogue made short work of the lock, and the group worked their way through the back area. Past vats, boilers, mills, and plumbing, they discovered that the very back area opens onto a cavern that appears, and smells, to have a river of skunked beer running through it. As the party searched the beer-saturated caverns for the missing brewers, I periodically made secret constitution checks for them and added intoxication points for each failure, going with the idea that breathing in all those beer fumes would be intoxicating of itself. Magical beer in a fantasy reality, man, I, it, that logic tracks with me. Ever so often, I'd ask the players to make a perception check to see if they noticed that they were getting drunk. It took a surprisingly long time before anyone made the roll to notice. The rogue and the bard were well and truly buzzed by that point. Also, even recognizing what was going on, the players didn't seem very concerned. They find one of the assistants passed out drunk in a storeroom. They shuffle him back to the entrance, and then go back in to search some more. Eventually, they run into the other assistant, who had reached obnoxiously belligerent levels of drunkenness. He's not going anywhere with anybody, and he's got this vat paddle for anyone who says otherwise. A short fight ensues as the adventurers try to grapple and subdue the drunken brew assistant. Two party members get knocked into the skunked beer river. Eventually, they had to knock the guy unconscious to get him out. Another trip out, then back in, and everyone is still getting progressively more intoxicated. So the group finally makes the back end of the cavern and finds the senior brewmaster passed out and floating above him is this guy. Barney the Beer Holder. A fight sort of started. The fighter and the mage got hit by the drunkard's gaze right off the bat, and the mostly intoxicated bard took a hit by the take a drink ray, which put her almost into alcohol poisoning territory. The rogue used his ring of obscuration to toss up a fog cloud and block Barney the beer holder's gaze. The party members in the back, the cleric and the druid, had no idea what was going on. Being blinded by the fog, they got separated from everyone else in the confusion. The fighting was largely confused and ineffective. Barney took some damage. Several characters got hit by the Last Call Ray, and the Bard became really good friends with Barney after getting hit with the Drinking Buddy Ray. The Cleric tried to heal people and offset the intoxication with mixed results. They finally managed to get to the Master Brewer and carry him out of Barney's range. Somewhat sobered up, the group started to consider how they would go in and take Barney down when the druid asked, What if Barney is the reason that this place has such good beer? If that's the case, the people in this town will be seriously upset with us if we kill him. I really love it when my players go off and take the adventure down an unexpected path. Now, they had to sneak out of the cavern, carrying the unconscious brewmaster while avoiding Barney, who's wondering where all his new drinking buddies have gone off to. They need to find a way to wake up the brewers and ask them what the deal is with Barney. And so now, this week, I have to decide, is Barney a good guy who's just had too much to drink? A good guy who's been enchanted by a jealous neighboring brewery to cause havoc? Or just an evil beer holder who's trying to destroy slash take over the town's magical brew cavern. 
I would like to thank user Atraxian Bear for his Beer Caverns map, and user Epic Miniatures for their Beer Holder Mini. And whoever is behind the handle Sir Chip McDip, cool name, on D&D Beyond, whose original beer holder I hacked to create my own. And that is it for this edition of Tales from the Tabletop. So you've already seen me draw my own rendition of, of uh, Beholder and uh, the, the gibbering masticator, the one that's got full of mouths and teeth instead of eyes. Uh, so of course I come across a story with a Beholder. Uh, I definitely want to draw it. Uh, and then it's a story with a a uh, lot of drinking jokes and beer jokes and we have a beer holder of course I have to draw it. And so to figure out how to best render this creature in, in ink and marker, uh, I looked up a bunch of reference. How do other people handle their beholders? Do I want to make him slimy? Do I want to make him scaly or any such thing like that? And also how many eye tentacles holding up beers will he have? Uh, I notice in most of the beer holder image searches I did, the beer holder has a hat on. Uh, sometimes it looks like, you know, an old ratty fishing cap, and sometimes it looks like, like a dude bro hat put to the side. Uh, and I thought, you know, nerd that I am, I like to keep things period specific, so I looked up medieval headwear, and I came across this hat right here. This hat is called a chaperon, which I did some reading, and this hat was most popular in the Burgundian region of France, which is right at the border of uh, France, and I want to say Germany. Um, and it's, uh, it is made by taking your typical medieval woolen hood, wrapping up the heavy hood bit, and putting it sideways at a jaunty angle, the donut on top, and so the fabric hanging down, uh, that is the long fabric from the actual hoodie bits. Uh, and uh, sometimes you could take a bit of one of those cloths and throw it over your shoulder like a scarf, or you put it and tuck it into the hat at the top, and I decided that this beer holder was definitely a, a tuck into the top. So we've got us a beer holder holding two horn mugs and two uh, ale mugs. It was a lot of fun for me. I really enjoyed this. And I enjoyed looking up medieval hats and reading more about it. And if you would like a uh, medieval hat, if you would like one of these chaperons, then may I recommend the Etsy store from whence these reference photos came. The store is called SPES Medieval Market. And they've got a number of different uh, well-made, good-looking apparel. And I will be 100% honest with you. If I had the 80 bucks to get myself a handmade medieval chaperon, 100% I would. Absolutely. And if you would like to see me in one of those, then consider joining my Patreon, Gabe's Sticker Club for Attractive People, where I send you a sticker every month for five bucks, and if I can get $80 worth of new patrons this month, I will 100% buy myself this hat and read some stories wearing it. That's in the neighborhood of 16 new patrons. Not that many, depending on who you go to. So if uh, you're watching this and listening to this and you want to see me wear one of these silly hats and read some D&D &D and other RPG stories to you, join up my Patreon, drop me a comment, uh, or you could buy some original art from me. And if you would like the original from today's episode, it'll be on my store on my website at coffeeandhate.biz. Click store at the top. And in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. And may your dice roll high and never be cursed.